So this is kind of a pretty straightforward way of doing this, and there's no problems with this at all. Okay, but there's another way of doing this, which is um, unique to the fact that these are quadratic identities. Okay, so just leave a bit of space for a second, or maybe do this on the side. That's where I'm going to do this. Okay, I want to illustrate something for you. If you take a straight line, here's a straight line. Okay. And I say, all right, uh, I have a straight line and it goes through some points on this Cartesian plane. Okay. Here's a question for you. How many points do you need to provide before you know exactly what line I'm talking about? Right? Think about it. Let's say if I say, okay, uh, it goes through the origin. It goes through the origin, right? Do you know yet, conclusively, without a shadow of a doubt, what equation I have in my mind? And he says, no, you don't, right? Because I can draw an infinite number of lines through the origin. So you don't know enough when you just have one point, right? What if I give you a second one? Like there. Now, you know it. Without a shadow of a doubt, if I gave you those coordinates, you use 2.4. And you're like, look, there is only a single straight line that will pass through both of those, okay? So I can know conclusively two points, that defines a line. All right, now, let's think about this guy. If I said to you now, it's not a straight line, but I have a parabola in my mind, okay? If I said, I'm going to give you a point, just humor me, do we know, without a shadow of a doubt, what the quadratic is? No, no you don't. Infinite set, right? Okay, I'm going to add a second point, let's say over here. Okay. Do you know, conclusively, without a shadow of a doubt, and the answer is no, you don't, because there's still an infinite number of parabolas that pass through each of these two points. Okay. All right. Now when I add one more point, okay, now we're locked in. There's only a single parabola you can draw that will go through all three of those points, right? Um, based on that, something like this. Okay. There's only one that will satisfy all of them. Okay? And you can keep doing this, by the way, this process, as my degree goes up, I can generalize it. If I had a cubic, how many points would you guess you need? Right, okay, so you get the idea, right? And by the way, this number of points, it corresponds to something that's already in the equation that I wrote down, right? Namely, two points corresponds to two coefficients. You see that? Okay. Three points corresponds to, by the way, I say corresponds to, it's not the same. A coefficient and a point are not the same thing, right? But they still correspond to the fact that you need three numbers. Three numbers will define the quadratic, okay? So if what you're setting out to prove is this guy, there's another way to show that this is true, right? I can take three points. If I can find three points on one side, right? Any three points I like and show that they're going to be equal to the same value on the right-hand side, then they must be exactly the same, right? It's a little bit like you're trying to guess my parabola, right? And I say, okay, you try and say, oh, is it going to go through here? And I say, yes. And then you try and guess it's going through here and then through here. If I say yes all three times, that means we must have the same parabola because there's only one possible solution, okay? So this is kind of um, method one that we just did here. You can maybe label that method one. which is just a straightforward algebraic simplification. Here's method two. Which is about substitution. Okay, so I want to pick three points. Three points on the parabola, right? Three values of x that I'm going to sub into here. And I want to expect the same thing on the left and the right hand side. Okay, now I can pick any three points I like, right? You know how I supplied these three to you? You can see these two are nice because they're roots, but you can pick any three you like, these three. If we have the same three on both sides, then they have to be the same parabola. So you might as well pick values that are going to be convenient to you, right? I'll give you one for free, right? I'm going to test x equals zero, right? x equals zero is always a really good option to do because it simplifies out so many things. Okay, so let's have a look at this for this case, right? What's the left-hand side equal to when x equals 0? And it's not a rocket science, okay? I'm going to go, it's a proof, right? So I don't skip anything. 0 times this 
plus zero times this. Okay, so that's zero and zero. That's what I get. Okay, and that's the same thing as the right hand side for x equals zero. It's true, so I don't really need to say that. Okay, so tick, I have a value, right? That was my first point that I tested. So it's a little bit like, it's almost like playing battleships, right? Where you're trying to guess the coordinates and you're like, oh yeah, you, you've, you've sunk my battleship for one of them. Can you do it another two times and then you've got the whole thing, okay? I provided you this point to store a little bit for time. What do you think might be another easy value of x to test out? A. How about x equals a? x equals a go. Now, I, this is not the only value I can test, right? The reason why I've chosen A is the same reason I chose zero, because it will make this guy go away. You see that? So let's test x equals A, right? So what does my left-hand side become? I'm going to have, over on the left-hand side, uh, on the left-hand fraction rather, A times A minus A or B minus A. You can see what's going to happen to that plus a outside of a minus b on a minus b. Okay, this is really good. I've got zero here, plus these a minus b's cancel, so I get a. So it works. Okay, it's really, really nice, it's happy. Yes? You have to write for um, zero plus a that b cannot equal to a, that's why you can do that. Yeah, I probably should. I probably should have said that here as well. Uh, the same the same kind of rule applies for when I cancel. But the, the top one was yeah. zero, wasn't it? So it didn't really matter. That's true. Yeah, so it's that's true. For well, yes and no, because... Yeah, yeah okay. Zero. Yeah, yeah, I see your point. Um, again, I'm kind of mentioning that as a formality. It's not yeah. the focus of it, but so that you know why we can do this. Okay. Alright, so you see what I've done? Yeah? Suggestion? Do you have to prove that... The right hand side. Oh. Do I have to prove that? Yeah. No, it got provided to me in the question. Oh. Um, they said, what, are, what were the words? A and B are distinct, they're not equal to each other, and non zero. They're oh, both okay. non equal to that. yeah. That's cool. That's right. Okay, now you can kind of see where I'm going, right? Hey. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test x equals b. Now, I, I didn't have to test x equals b. I could test, I mean, there's no reason why, based on method one, we should be able to test any value we like, but we might as well test easy ones. So let's go ahead and test our last value here. Okay, what are we going to get? B, B minus A, B minus A, B, B minus B. And so now we find, we found the x coordinates. Mm -hmm. How do we find the y? Ah, I will show you in a second. Hold on, let's just say that. Okay, they're all true. Right. Now the question was, how do I find that, um, you know, what these are equal to, if that's the x value, what's the y value? And the thing is, I already have, by substituting in, right? So you know how, for instance, if I had y equals x squared plus 5x oh, plus that is 6, the y value. right? And if I put in an x value, like say, x equals 0, yeah. right? I'll get something out, I'll, I'll get something out, and the something that I get out is the y value. Right? So even though the, there never appears any y here, the y is kind of implied. <coughs> right? This is a y, and this is another y, and what I'm trying to prove is that they're the same y. Okay? They're just shown in different forms. But why? <laughs> okay, so what I would then conclude is to say, therefore, it's true for x equals 0, x equals a, x equals b. I've got my three values, I've got my three points on the parabola, right? Therefore, I can just say, I've proved it, that this plus this oh, so if you prove three points, you get to prove them for everything. Bam, exactly. Okay? In exactly the same way that if I had two straight lines, right, even if they were written in different ways, if I put in two values and they both line up, it must be the same line. What other line could you be imagining? Right? It has to be identical. Now, you might look through this and you're like, oh, it's a bit of an awkward way of doing it, especially when this way was just fine. It was just fine, okay? As you'll see in the exercise when you go through, sometimes, depending on the form of what you've been given, this is a dramatically simpler way or a more elegant way of actually showing it. Sometimes it's not obvious what algebra you're going to do there, but you can always test values. You can always test values. It might take longer in terms of writing, but in terms of thinking, it's very simple. Just pick three. Pick three easy ones and then off you go.